Jaya Jaya Prabhu Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. This is uh, Canto number nine, chapter nine, the dynasty of Amsuman, and this is text number forty-six. Hmm. Ye vikship tendriya diohu, devas te swa ridistitam, na vidanti priyam shasvad. <laughs> Atmanam kim utapare ye vikshep tendriya dio devas te svadridistitam na vedanti priyam shasvad atmanam kim utapare ye vikshep Tendriya Dio Devas te svaridistitam Navadanti Priyam Shasvar Atmanam Kim Utapare Yea, <coughs> which personalities? Vikshipta Indriya Dia, whose senses, mind and intelligence, are always agitated because of material conditions. Deva, like the demigods, Te, such persons, Swaridi, in the core of the heart, stitam, situated, na, not, vindati, no, priyam, the dearmost personality of Godhead, shashvat, constantly, eternally, atmanam, the supreme personality of Godhead. Kim Uta, what to speak of, 
apare, others like human beings. Hmm. Translation purported by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Even though the demigods have the advantages of being situated in the higher planetary system, their minds and senses and intelligence are agitated by material conditions. Therefore, even such elevated persons fail to realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is eternally situated in the core of the heart. What then is to be said of others, such as human beings who have fewer advantages? Mm -hmm. Purport. It is a fact that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always situated in everyone's heart. Ishwar sarva bhutanam riddeshe junatishtate. But because of our material anxieties, which are inevitable in this material world, we cannot understand the Supreme Lord, although he is situated so near to us. For those always agitated by material conditions, the yoga process is recommended so that one may concentrate his mind about the Supreme Personality of Godhead within the heart. Dhyana vastita tadgatena manasa pasyanti yam yogivinaha. Because in material conditions, the mind and the senses are always agitated by the yoga procedures like dhyana, asana, and dhyana, one must quiet the mind and concentrate it upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In other words, the yoga process is a material attempt to realize the Lord, where bhakti, devotional service, is the spiritual process by which to realize Him. Maharaj Kadvanga accepted the spiritual path and therefore he was no longer interested in anything material. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 1855, Bhakti Imam Avijananti, only by devotional service can I be understood. One can understand Krishna, the Parabrahma, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, only through devotional service. The Nova Lord never says that one can understand him by performing mystic yoga or philosophically speculating. Bhakti is above all such material attempts. Attempts. Ayabila sita sunya jnana karmana anvritam. Bhakti is uncontaminated, being unalloyed even by gyan or pious activities. Om agyan timirandasya gena jana salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurve namaha. Sri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vande Ham Shiguro Shiyuta Padikamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Scha Si Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Dragonatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrikabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Taruvascha Kripa Sindhu Bebacha Paditanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Siddhi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Jina Prabhupada Ki Jai so, bhakti yoga, hmm. demigods, situated in a very nice material position, also known as bhaktas. They have devotion for the Lord. But it says they fail to realize the supreme personality of Godhead. Although situated in such an, a lofty material position, and have so many outstanding qualities, 
It says that in the word is used, their senses are agitated by the material conditions. So in bhakti, or we might say for success in devotional service, Prabhupada call it the middle road in terms of our material arrangements. Not too much and not too little. Those who have more than they need, and then they struggle in order to maintain that. And it takes their time, attention, and also energy away from executing devotional service. And those who have less than they need to maintain their body and soul together, they struggle with that and cannot stay steady in the practice of spiritual life. So the uh, Sri Yashupana says, Ishavasha Midam Sarvan. Uh, whatever you need in order to live nicely in this world. Why? So we can execute devotional service. It's not about living nicely or having a nice material position. These things are temporary and have nothing to do with our, with our relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but they can facilitate. So the demigods are meant to have nice material arrangements to facilitate their service to the Supreme Lord. But so many nice material arrangements causes them to become distracted. There's always problems in the heavenly planets. Uh, Prabhupada said, even if things are going on nicely there, and then demons every once in a while attack. The whole appearance of Krishna in this material world was caused by the demons attacking the demigods in the heavenly planet. That was one of the causes when Lord Parasaram killed the Kshatriya kings 21 times, 21 generations because of their pride and arrogance in their position and not fulfilling their duties as proper Kshatriyas, um, the world, at least the earth planet, was devoid of what we say proper rule. So there was a problem in what to do. And so the sages, got together and discussed it. And there was some plan made. What was that plan? The plan was to create Rajarsis or saintly kings that would repopulate the world and rule the world. And so it was an interesting plan because the sages had to make some great sacrifices. So what was that sacrifice? And so the sages and saints is united with the the princesses who were from royal families and by that unity uh, a whole new generation of saintly kings came and again after some years generations the world again was under saintly rule at least for a little while this is the nature of the material world it's always changing and after some time uh, the demigod, the demons attacked the demigods in the heavenly planet. This is all mentioned in the Mahabharata. And there was a big fight between the devas and the, demig and the uh, demons. So the demons, in wanting to get an advantage in their battle, decided to use earth as their uh, foundation for fighting. So in order to do that, they took birth in various species of life and gradually repopulated the world with the demonic population. That's why someone, so many of those demons we hear about that Krishna killed, Agasur and Palambasur and so many of these other demons, were actually created for these particular fightings against the demigods. And so now, after that, the earth again became overburdened. And then Krishna came, yada yada hi dharmasya. And so the point was that even in the heavenly planets, there's so many nice facilities and so many nice arrangements, so much intelligence, so much beauty, so much facility, so much longevity, practically hardly any material difficulties, but still they can't realize the Supreme Personality of the God, Godhead because of what we say, too much attachment to material opulences too much attachment to material opulences. So although they're bhaktas and they have devotion for the Lord, their devotion is somewhat tinged by 
karma or a little a desire for material position, desire for material facilities. So that tinge makes bhakti somewhat less effective and therefore it becomes a great struggle. So here we hear in this particular verse that ultimately Prabhupada ends the verse and he quotes Srila Rupa Goswami's verse, Ayabila Sita Sunya Jnana Kamana Navritam Anukulena Krishna Silanam Bhakti Uttama. Prabhupada said this verse is so important to understand because if we want to know what is actually pure bhakti, it is this verse. It is verse. Every particular shastra has what is called Parabhakta Sutra, a Paribhakti Sutra. And that is the foundation by which the verse, that shastra is established. In the Nectar of Devotion, this verse is the Paribhakti Sutra, which established the whole principle of what Lupa Goswami was talking about, pure devotional service. So in that verse, it's interesting because it gives what is not and what it is. Prabhupada mentions that there are four types of people. Those who live in the material world to enjoy their senses, the karmis, the people who are simply interested in satisfying their mind and senses by so many various types of activities. We all heard about that. We all came from that, that background. And so, there, they just struggle with the material energy, padam padam yavi padam tesha, life after life struggling. A little better than is the jnanis. The jnanis understand that this material world is miserable, but they have this, some desire to merge into the unmanifested form of the Lord through the process of uh, jnana yoga, various types of drilling the respirations, pranayam, so many other things. They still have a desire to free themselves from material suffering, but at the same time, there is no desire to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. At least their service motivation, whatever it is, is tinged with a desire for liberation. So still, they are still contaminated by what we say personal interest. Higher than that are the yogis. The yogis, they, they want to control the material energy through various types of mystic power. Krishna explains in the uh, 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam that um, there are 18 mystic cities, eight prim primary and 10 secondary. And Krishna explains the whole process of developing these cities and at the end he says, it's useless, <laughs> it's useless. And the yogis, so yogis think, oh, if they can become lighter than the lightest, smaller than the smallest. Prabhupada said they can even create a planet, become so powerful. It can control people's minds. So the whole idea is control. I remember many, many years ago, back in 2004, we went to the World Parliament of Religions in Barcelona, Spain. It was a big gathering of various types of spiritual groups and the Mayavadis were there <laughs> in full, of full form. And so one night it was Hindu night. <laughs> so that was us, we, were, we came and we had to uh, provide the prasadam for the program. You know, devotees have that main service wherever we go. We're always providing prasadam. Because everybody, even if they don't agree with us, they like prasadam. So we went and um, I remember Srupa Dhammadar Goswami Maharaj was also there, I was there and there were devotees there and the Mayavadis took over the whole stage. They got there first and made sure they had, they controlled the whole program. And so we had to sit there and listen to their, you know, what we call philosophy. <laughs> it's, not, it's not exactly philosophy, it's, it has a different, you know, the etymological statement is quite, has a foundation in idiocy. And so, mm, at one point I remember one Mayavadi said, and he was preaching and there was so many other people there, there was a large gathering. And he said, uh, you can control this world. You can be that powerful by yoga, by meditation. 
by chanting mantras, and he was describing so many things. And I was thinking, he's probably controlled by everything else, and he's trying to control the world, you know. <laughs> so yeah, so this is the, the, the yogis, or even they come in the form of various types of spirituals. They want to somehow or other manipulate and, and somehow control this material world. But what are devotees? Devotees just want to serve Krishna. That's one. That is bhakti. Bhakti means simply to serve Krishna for the pleasure of Krishna. To come to that stage is not so easy. Prabhupada, in Nectar of Devotion, Rupa Goswami explains that pure devotional service is very rare. He talks about the six characteristics of pure devotional service. To come to Ananya Bhakti or unalloyed devotional service is quite rare. But here we are in Mayapur, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy is so strong. The association of so many wonderful devotees, the, the mercy of the Dham. And so we have such a great advantage here to actually to move forward on the process of pure devotional service. But then again, material energy is always there to dictate other ways. So in this verse, Rupa Goswami explains that if one is performing devotional service for some material gain, then that is called uh, anukulena krishna silanam bhakti utnam. What is it? Karmadikam. That is with the desire for fruit of gain. That's still tinged by the, by the material energy. And if one is desiring to somehow or other, like the jnanis, get some, some benefit of merging or some happiness from freedom of material suffering. And that is also a tinge in devotional service. But then again, now after restricting or helping us to understand what to avoid, he says that devotional service has to be anukulena krishna silanam. Not only performing devotional service, but for the pleasure of Krishna. That is the intention of, of devotional service. So the mood of worship is that a devotee thinks how to please the Lord, or how to please the Lord's devotees who are situated in devotional service. That is actually the focus of a devotee in devotional service. Now, that, that pleasing Krishna has to be the intention to please Krishna. If you please Krishna without the intention to, to please Krishna, it falls short from the principle of pure devotional service. Just like Prabhupada says, the demons, they please Krishna. Well, what do they get? They get suhuja mukti at best, or they get liberation. They don't get bhakti. Why? Because they have hostility towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and therefore that hostility is a we say, a deviation in the whole process of connecting with Krishna. Even though they connect with Krishna and somehow or other please Krishna, why, how do they please Krishna? Krishna likes to fight. <laughs> Prabhupada said, where do you get that propensity to fight? From Krishna. <laughs> so that propensity that we have for what we say conflict on different levels is also situated within the, the nature of our relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna likes to fight. <laughs> but he, fi he can't fight in the, in the spiritual world, so he comes to this material world, and demons are there, and then he fights, he kills the demons, mm -hmm. they get liberation, and Krishna, you know, is, enjoys the fighting spirit. Prabhupada said he likes to flex his muscles. <laughs> so this is Krishna. So, but because there's no intention to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then that, that uh, connecting with the Supreme Personality of Godhead is, what we saw, say, not bhakti. Now, Mother Yasoda, she also does something to displease Krishna. She ties him up, and Krishna gets angry, and then he bites his lip, and he becomes very, very unhappy. So in Mother Yasoda's attempt to serve the Lord, she displeases him. 
Is that a disqualification? No. Why? Because in her love for Krishna, she's acting in the mood of her relationship with Krishna. And actually Krishna, even though externally uh, acting in a displeasure pleasing way, he is very pleased. And because she has no hostility, she has only love for Krishna, although her intention is, although Krishna becomes apparently dissatisfied still, it's pure bhakti. So Rupa Goswami explains how the devotee, when executing devotional service, has to have the intention to please Krishna and has to be directed towards Krishna. So that is pure bhakti. So to get to pure bhakti is very difficult, but at that, that is the actual goal of this Krishna consciousness movement. It's not that we can only progress so far. One has to come to the platform of uh, uh, what we say, spontaneous devotional service. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains in Chaitanya Charitamrita that devotional service is spontaneous. Following rules and regulations get one a foothold in devotional service. Well, when, when one comes, when becomes fixed in following the rules and re regulations, one has to have developed the mood of developing attachment for Krishna through the process of hearing about Krishna more and more and more. Through that attachment of hearing about Krishna, one de develops attraction for Krishna. When that attraction becomes strong, then one natural that attraction becomes developed on different stages and finally it reaches the perfection of loving service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is the constitutional position of all living entities. So the whole process is ultimately to bring us to that stage. Now is bhakti, is bhakti easy or is bhakti hard? Can I pose a question to all of you? Is bhakti, Prabhupada says both, right? Have you heard his lectures? He probably says, Bhakti, no problem. Very easy. But Bhakti, very difficult. Very difficult. So what is it? Which one? Is it both? Simultaneously one and different? <laughs> and Prabhupada poses the question in one verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the fourth canto, and he says, some say bhakti, devotional service, is very easy, and some say devotional service is very difficult. And Prabhupada says, for those who have determination, devotional service is easy. And for those who don't, it's difficult. So he adds that principle, that when one is determined, so how do we get determination? Determination comes by association with devotees who have that determination. But it also comes by giving up the desire for sense enjoyment. As long as one still has desires for material sense enjoyment, one can I stay fixed on the platform of devotional service. And Prabhupada said, especially the desire for sex life. He says that destroys determination very quickly. So one who can give up that, what we say, that material adiras, it is the material adiras or the attachment for sex desire or sense gratification through sexual activity can stay fixed on the platform of devotional service. But then again, what about the, the subtle roots? Every gross attachment has a, has a subtle root to its attachment. So profit adoration, distinction, all of these subtle aspects which come as the foundation for the gross forms of sense gratification also keep one from reaching the platform of pure devotional service. But if one is determined, then one can, one can uh, overcome the difficulties in devotional service. So Rupa Goswami explains that in Nectar of Instructions, he says, Utsiha nistaya darya tata karma parartana. Uh, enthusiasm. What is enthusiasm? Enthusiasm means to in intelligently apply what Srila Prabhupada and the previous acharyas have given us 
as the platform of devo practice of devotional service. Through that enthusiastic application of the transcendental knowledge in practice, one can, can stay fixed in that mood of enthusiasm and devotional service. Then, then one can easily continue through to determination and ultimately patience. Patience. I've been executing devotional service for 40 years. I haven't got love of God. I remember Haya Griva Prabhu back in the 1966, I believe it was, in New York City. He said to Srila Prabhu, Srila Prabhu Bhad, I have been executing devotional service for one year and I have not got love of God. Prabhu said, oh, one year. How many lifetimes have you been in this material world? <laughs> so, yeah, that element of patience is also included with the process of enthusiasm, determination, and patience. And then, of course, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, avoiding the association of non-devotees, and following the process as given by the previous acharyas, not adding, not taking anything away. So these things are favorable for the process of devotional service. So when you read and hear Srila Prabhupada's description and practically every lecture, every purport, he talks about devotional service. He talks about different aspects of devotional service. And it seems like it's so complicated and yet it seems like it's so simple. But then again, it is, as Prabhupada said, simple for the simple. Complicated for the complicated. Just chant Hare Krishna. Prabhupada said, and you can't do that. <laughs> and you can't do that. So he said, Vishramuta Muni, he sat around in the middle of a summer with seven fires around, meditating in the hot sun, and in the wintertime, immersing himself in ice cold water up to his neck. And we're asking you to chant 16 rounds. So, of course, here in Mayapura, we're all chanting. We're all chanting more and more rounds, not only 16, but as Prabhupada said, chant more and more and more. So the process of devotional service is to, as uh, um, Sanatan Goswami says, it's really summed up in the whole process of Sanatan Goswami. He really puts the whole process in the mood of what we really need to understand. Accept everything favorable, then you have to know, Anukulena. Reject everything unfavor, Pratikul. Krishna is my only maintainer, Krishna is my only protector, Krishna is my only provider, the word only is there. And the last one is Danya, or depending on Krishna and, and depending on the mercy of Krishna in all circumstances, which is humility. So these six things are actually the six principles of surrender and devotional service. Krishna will maintain, maintain me, Krishna will protect me, Krishna will... Ha Do we have that faith? Do we have that faith? That faith comes by the execution of devotional service, but it also comes by developing an understanding of the, the philosophical teachings given to us by Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada's, the knowledge that Prabhupada gave us is the foundation to keep us moving forward. It's a light in the direction towards the ultimate goal. Therefore, reading and studying Srila Prabhupada's books and learning how to apply them in each and every situation is the foundation for successful execution of devotional service. So, devotees know what to do. We always know what to do, right? There's no problem. We, everything is clear, but we don't know what not to do. That's where we get stuck sometimes, right? We, sometimes we add a little bit of chili to the sweet rice. And it doesn't work. So the, the process is to be very careful to avoid those things which cause one to, to again become trapped by the material energy. 
And of course, Rupa Goswami goes on to the next verse, or the previous verse, actually, he talks about the six things that destroy bhakti. In Atyahara, too much eating, too much collecting, prayasa, endeavoring for things that are difficult to achieve, material things, useless talk, again, associating with materialistic people, um, what else? Performing devotional service just for the sake of performing, not knowing why you're doing it. Why am I performing devotional service? Because my spiritual master said I should. <laughs> so one has to understand how, why am I doing what I'm doing, what is the purpose, and what is the actual goal. And what is the why I have to follow these rules and regulations, and how are they actually helping me to progress in devotional service? How are they helping me become detached from material consciousness and material activities? And again, the other one is to follow the rules and reg uh, to reject rules and regulations and act independently and whimsically, thinking they're not important. And then the last one is uh, endeavoring for things that are, no, I said that, was prayasa, the last one is uh, greed for material uh, things. In other words, greed, trying to collect more and more. So the whole science is given to us by Srila Rupa Goswami, both in those two books, Nectar of Devotion and Nectar of Instruction. But the, but the key, the real key to devotional service is actually serving the great souls. By serving the great souls, one gets great mercy, and by that such mercy, one can easily move forward in the path. Of the, everything becomes clear. Because Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, there's no one more dear to me than my devotees, my pure devotees. So one who serves the pure devotee actually does pure devotional service. So this is, this is a quick summation of some of the principles of bhakti. But here, there's a verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita that actually sums up the whole thing. It says, and this is by this is from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 8, verse number 7. Pure devotional service cannot, cannot be had even by pious activity in hundreds of thousands of lives. It can be attained only by paying one price, that is, intense greed to obtain it. If it is available somewhere, one must purchase it without delay. So that's the, the what is called laoya, or intense desire to have devotion, to have the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord in devotional service is the quality, qualification that makes devotional, that all of our devotional services activities become fully successful. That greed. Greed is there. Sometimes that greed gets diverted to material things. Greed for fame, greed for money, greed for various types of sense gratification. But when it's dovetailed or directed towards devotional service, it actually creates within the heart and mind of the devotee and the happiness they're looking for in devotional service. Okay, so I just wanted to just briefly cover some of the points that make up the process of bhakti. It's such, a, it's such an amazing process. It's so detailed, so intricate, so hard to understand, yet said to be so simple, yet said to be so difficult. It's an amazing, it's like this unfathomable mountain that we cannot understand. So it can be discussed from so many different angles, but the essence of pure devotional service is two things, and Lord Chaitanya really illustrated these things, two activities in devotional service. is to chant the holy names of the Lord without offense and actually serve the Vaishnavas. These are the two things that Lord Chaitanya emphasizes in, the, in his own activities in devotional service. So with that mood, one can make nice progress in devotional service. It becomes easy when we focus on these two. And of course, what makes these two things easy to do is Krishna Prasad. That's important. 
Okay. Any questions or comments? Yes. I'm sorry if I spoke so fast today because I'm so tired that if I didn't, I would fall asleep. So, just in case you were wondering. Hare Krishna. Uh -huh. uh, Maharaj, thank you so much for the lecture. Uh, can you a little bit explain uh, what is the real meanings of uh, balance between balance between the, our spiritual engagements and uh, the, our material, I can say, material desirable things which we do. And second one is... Don't balance your material desires, get rid of it. <laughs> That's the idea. So balance them out. <laughs> balance between this, our material engagements and uh, spiritual engagements. For a devotee, it's everything is spiritual, even maintaining the body. If you're eating to maintain your body to serve the Lord, that's spiritual. If you're taking rest in order to maintain your body, and that is also part of your process of devotional service. For a devotee, nothing is separate. Maintaining family, even if you have occupation, if it's done in the mood of bhakti, and if it's done as an offering to the Lord, it is also called gona bhakti. Gona bhakti means that bhakti that is parallel to pure bhakti and supports pure bhakti. It is not material. It's not material. And is there some type of, some particular stage when this our Vaidhi bhakti is turned off on uh, uh, the Raganuga bhakti? When where, it starts Raganuga bhakti? Where does Vaidhi bhakti come to Raganuga yeah, bhakti? Yeah. Is there it, some stage of... It's mentioned that it, usually on the platform of Ashakti. Adhaustrata, Sadhu, Sangha, Bhajana, Kriya, Anartha, Nivriti, Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti. From the Ashakti platform, generally spontaneous devotional service develops. Nishta helps you one become fixed, and when you become fixed, you develop Brahma, Bhuta, Prasanna, Atmana, Soshati, Nakangshati. You develop a sweet taste. And you're really fixed in devotional service and you're happy. But then, as that becomes concentrated in devotional service, I mean, it's very detailed explanation. Srila uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that in Jaiva Dharma, the different stages and how they progress from one stage to another. So the details are there, but the symptoms are understood like that. So usually on the platform of Ashakti, the one starts to move into the platform of Raganuga Bhakti, generally. There's many variations also. <laughs> That's Bhakti Vinoda Kaur. Anyway. Yes, Mataji. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Um, I have a question. It's con it is concerned about anger. Uh, since uh, the beginning of uh, the, the uh, of Canto 9, we mm. have been hearing about uh, anger is not really recommended. Mm. So is we are sometimes controlled by, by our anger. But we we have been practicing uh, Krishna consciousness for years, and then we realize that in, in the course of time, uh, our Childhood, we have um, accumulated things in the, our childhood which are, yeah. we are com becoming conscious of it and this raises anger within yeah. ourselves. So, how yes. is it possible to, uh, I would say, even concentrate on this and get rid of it because it is really an impediment? So, it, these, these uh, you know, our association with the material energy is long term. And so the anarthas that we develop are actually rooted within the consciousness. And even though, you know, sometimes you think, you also see, uh, you're going along so nicely and all of a sudden something happens and you get angry and you say, why did I get angry? <laughs> you, look, you reflect on it. You, you have to see that these things are sometimes um, not so easy to root out simply by just by being consciously aware of the desire to root them out. Therefore, two things. One, chant the holy names of the Lord. And that purifies the heart, chaito, dharpana, marjana. And um, 
become conscious of one's anarthas and very carefully avoid them. And by avoiding them and executing the process, and gradually the, the, the effects of these things will be gradually reduced by the power of your devotional service. But when you see them arise, just don't feed them. That's all. Can I ask you another question, please? Okay, well, is it what we call contamination when we have so much things that are... Well, that's called material contamination, yeah. Yeah, material contamination means that which is covering the soul's pure relationship with Krishna due the association with matter. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you please explain what is considered to be a Vaishnava seva? A Vaishnava seva. Sin? What, what, yeah, what, what does it mean? Sin? What does it mean um, to serve the Vaishnavas? To serve the Vaishnavas? Yes, how we can do it? Well, just think. What can I do to serve the, the Vaishnavas? We can give prasadam. The six loving exchanges by Rupa Goswami and Nectar of Instruction also talk about how to develop that, that satsanga. Srila Prabhupada talks about that as being the foundation for our establishing all these temples. To develop Vaishnava association, in that association, to, to talk about Krishna, to hear about Krishna, to chant together, to see if a devotee needs something and I can provide it, that's, a, that's an opportunity for service. To be friendly to devotees. To glorify devotees. To so many things we can do. Just like people think of how to do good to each other in the material world, we come up with so many things. Just like if you see a devotee who's having some it was like one devotee came to my room last night and he wanted to talk, but I noticed he wasn't feeling good. So I offered him some medicine. So, you know, I, was, you know, I shouldn't think, well, he's here and he's not sick. If I can give him some, oh, we offer him some medicine, if there's some, some advice, like uh, talk about Krishna, chat, like that. Um, I mean, there's a whole, you know, whole etiquette on Vaishnava association and how to associate with Vaishnava. The general mood, aside from the specific things we can do, is think how to serve the Vaishnava. Prabhupada was saying something really interesting. And he was saying that his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, used to say that I see all my disciples as my spiritual masters. But now, he took it even a step farther, all living entities as my spiritual masters. If you see every living entity as your spiritual master, then what is your mood towards your spiritual master? Service. Do you think, if I can serve this devotee in some way, why? And I'm actually serving my spiritual master by serving that devotee. So that's the mood. Uh, Sachin Nandana Maharaj talks, of, he gives a nice story called the, what is it called? The mood of compassion. And he gives a nice analogy. The analogy is that there is, there's heaven and there's hell. Okay. So, one man, he's situated in heaven, and he talks to the, I guess, St. Peter, I guess he's the head of heaven now. So he says, St. Peter, you know, what's it like in heaven, and what's it like in hell? So St. Peter said, all right, let's go to hell. So they go to hell, 
And uh, so all the people in hell are there. So it's time for lunch. So they all sit down along this round table. And in the middle of the table, all the food is there. And everyone is sitting a distance away, and they all have long forks. And they all waiting for the bell to ring. So when the bell rings, they all try to take their long fork and grab the food in the middle of the table and put it in their mouth. Because everyone's fork is so long and big, they keep banging into each other's forks, and all the food drops, and they can't put it in their mouth because the fork's so big. And they're all getting frustrated. So he says, that's hell. So then he goes to heaven, and it's the same situation. Everyone is sitting around the table, and it's time for lunch. They all have long forks, and the bell rings. And so when everyone bell rings, everyone takes the fork and feeds the person across the way. To feed. So everyone is feeding, and that way everyone gets to eat. Does that help? So, yeah. By serving others, you actually serve yourself. <laughs> so we have to try that. We have our needs, we have our concerns, and we have a tendency sometimes to be overly concerned about what happens. But if we give it, and we should, we should make sure that we have whatever we need in order to execute our devotional service nicely. But if, we, if it becomes the only thing we focus on, and we're missing the opportunity to advance from the Anything else? Can you see, David? Thank you for the moment. Um, in uh, devotional service, what's the difference between determination and patience? Um, me, it sounds as though it's the same thing because without patience, we cannot be determined. Without the term being determined, we can be patient. It, ta it takes patience to become determined, but at the same time, the result of our devotional service is not going to fructify immediately. In other words, determination means to accept those uh, situations that might be very difficult to overcome, and yet stay steady in our practice. So sometimes we're in a situation where it's difficult, but if we execute devotional service and, and not be, what we say, so much disturbed by the situation and stay focused in our Krishna consciousness, that's determination. If we're moved by happiness and distress, that's not determination. That's, that's mental platform. If it's good, I'm enthusiastic. If it's not, I lose my enthusiasm. And patience is the result of our practice that in due course of time, Krishna's mercy will manifest itself. And what is that mercy? That he, he gives the devotee transcendental happiness, he gives transcendental knowledge, he frees them from material attachment. So, patience. That's the hard one. Does that help? Anything else? Okay, well, thank you very much. Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai, Shumat Bhagavatam Ki Jai.